Expect me, nigga, like you expect Jesus to come back. Expect me, nigga, I'm coming. Expect me, nigga, like you expect Jesus to come back. Expect me, nigga, I'm coming. English is a difficult language. We park our cars on a driveway, but we drive cars on a parkway. When you transport something by car, it's called a shipment. But when you transport something by ship, it's called cargo. Piano players are called pianists, but race car drivers aren't called racists. The most popular sport played in North America is football, but there is no ball, and they use their hands, not their feet. We cook bacon, but we bake cookies. We have an alphabet with 26 letters, and it's always recited in the same way. But is there any reason that the alphabet has to be in that specific order? It can get really, really confusing. But you see, how our subconscious mind works is that we create images from words. So the English language has many words with multiple meanings, right? Right. <laughs> light, as in it's not that heavy, light or sunlight or light pigmentation. Dark, as in dark pigmentation, dark as in scary, dark as in the night sky kind of dark okay which which is which are you talking about a witch or which choosing hard to choose right so what do i mean by the secret spells of the english language well let me share with you what i call our premier life sentence and it goes something like this we awake each morning and go off during the weekdays to earn the living at various jobs and undertakings until we come to the weekend. And this seems perfectly acceptable to most people. However, more people die between six and nine on a Monday morning than any other time of the week. So I do what I call a translation of the English language, and I spell that T-R-A-N-C-E with the idea that words cast spells. So when you translate that life sentence, you remember that a wake is a funeral party for the dead. Mourning is the state you're in when you attend a wake. And you would have to be in a week days to earn the living, since urns are for the ashes of the dead. We call our jobs undertakings. Job itself is a Hebrew word for persecuted. And what we get at the end of this perverse bargain with life is the weak end of the deal as we become progressively weakened ourselves. Somebody was just like, they feel like people that are on a spiritual path or even talking about people that's in religion, they shouldn't cuss because it just don't suit them very well. My nigga, bruh, whatever you call yourself, ma'am, lady, the English language is a cursed language. It's already cursed. We spitting out spells all motherfucking day. What I'm saying right now is casting a spell. How am I projecting my energy with what I'm saying though? So today's word is alchemy. And we're gonna talk about mental alchemy today. And this is the ability to change some thoughts that have hindered you in the past or some beliefs that have hindered you in the past and transmute them, change them so that you can get different results in the now. So similar to the placebo effect that they use on people when they're in a testing environment for medicine and they give one group the actual pill that's supposed to work and then they give the other group the fake pill that's supposed to work, right? And so once they tell both testing groups that they can expect to see certain results, it is statistically said that the placebo group, the fake pill group, receives at least 40% of the same results that the, the actual pill testing group got. How is that possible? Belief. What do you believe about your circumstances that needs to shift? What in your blueprint of belief needs to shift? How can you use your mental alchemy to get the results that you're looking for in life? Alchemy. Here's to your breakthrough.